What is up YouTube, it's your boys Collins, we're back again with another tutorial. Now in this specific tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly how to make this. This tutorial is absolutely free and we're only going to be using free assets, free sound effects and at the same time free plugins. So you don't got to worry about paying for anything because I was trying to make this as easy as possible and at the same time as affordable as possible. The only software you will need is Adobe After Effects. Go ahead and click the link inside of the description to be able to download all the project files. And let's jump right in. What I want you to do is I want you to come all the way over this space right and double click this space to import all the assets including the practice footage as well as the sound effects that I've provided in the description below i hope you guys do have adobe after effects because this this is the software we're going to be using so be sure to go ahead and grab everything and press import and once you import everything it should import just both the sound effects and the footage so just double click the space one more time click on the vfx assets and import that folder as well too now of course here's what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new um I'm going to create, I'm going to place this footage inside of another folder and rename this to footage. And then, of course, I'm also going to place this sound effects as well to in another folder and rename this to SFX. I'm just going to place this old project into this footage. So don't don't worry about this because we're not going to be worried. We're not going to be using this. But once you have everything imported, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and grab the footage itself. Click on it drag it into this specific um, composition setup thing and just place it in there once you do that it's going to open up a new composition and of course it should basically bring your video in here so what you, what you can even do is you can click on these three lines go to composition settings and be sure to go ahead and rename this to um let's rename this to uh super jump main comp and then you can put open bracket final render and then close bracket and then do me a favor and press OK. Now, once you do that, right, you would have renamed the whole entire project to something like this. And that's exactly what we want. So as you can see, right, before we even get the party started, you can see that um, the way I recorded this video was I actually went outside. I placed the camera on a tripod and I used my phone That's the reason why the quality looks like that because the phone quality always looks like this By the way, go ahead and change the resolution from full to quarter So what I did was I went outside and I decided to shoot this video and record this video on my phone And all I did was I set the camera up and then I pretended like I was you know Super jumping or something like that and then I landed back on the ground and then all I did was I walked out of the frame and then I made sure that for the next few couple of minutes, I had an empty clip of the background. Again, it's so good if you record this on, an, uh, on a tripod because, again, filming this type of stuff on a tripod makes life easier. And always make sure you record an empty and a clean plate. That way we can be able to do crazy edits with our subject. Awesome. Let's get the party started. So what I want you to do is I want you to move this time indicator to right around here where our subject is getting ready to jump. So let's just say right around here. This is where he's getting ready to jump. We're going to click on the layer and we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and hit control shift D or command shift D if you're using a Mac. Now move this time indicator a few frames forward to the part where our subject, his leg is just right around here at the just just like just right where he's it's getting ready to you know lift off the ground that's exactly what you want you want to you, you want to actually stop right here and then what i want you to do is hit control shift d we're going to move this time indicator all the way over here to the end where he basically walks out of the frame and what we're going to do is we're going to hit control shift d and then we're going to come all the way over here and move this time indicator right around here and hit control shift d again and then delete that last piece do me a favor and click on that la last layer and rename this to BG by pressing enter. So click on the layer, press enter on your keyboard and rename it to BG for background. Of course, you can go ahead and change the color to brown. Do me a favor and select all of these layers and turn off the sound off of it. Click on the background layer and then drag that at the bottom and then offset this all the way over here to the very beginning. Move this time indicator a few frames forward to the part where he basically... His feet is off the ground just about right here. Click on the layer, right click it and go ahead and go to time and go to time freeze or freeze frame. Awesome. Do the same thing that you did with renaming the background and rename this to frozen frame. And then change the color to yellow. And then press control S 
to save your progress. Now, when you hit Control S to save, it's going to basically open up a new window. You can go ahead and save the project as whatever you want to save it as. For me, I had saved it as this super jump so um, you can you can do the same thing for yours and save your project and then press save and then come back into your composition now once you've done that right what i want you to do is come over here to the quality change the quality from quarter to full nice what i want you to do is go ahead and zoom in press press and hold space bar on your keyboard to reposition this zoom in reposition this and come all the way over here to the pen tool and click on the pen tool and we're going to start drawing a mask around our subject. Click on the frozen frame, zoom in again, hold space to offset, click and hold space and begin to draw a, a, a mask around your subject or a mask around me, if that makes sense. I'm going to speed up this part. And then close the mask. Awesome. Click on the uh, what's it called, selection tool and go ahead and come over here and click fit up to 100. We've basically masked out our subject from the background. Now here's what we're going to do next. We're going to go ahead and click on the layer. We're going to press F on the keyboard and we're just going to feather this about two pixels. Do me a favor and place a lock on the mask itself so that, you know, you can't really just move the mask anyhow and it, you've basically placed a lock on it. And that's exactly what we want to do. Now here's what we're going to do at the same time. We're going to go ahead and click on the anchor point tool and be sure to go ahead and once you've clicked on the anchor point tool, make sure this layer itself is clicked on and then come over here until you see this specific anchor point tool and offset this anchor point tool somewhere around the center of our subject. Go ahead and click on the selection tool one more time and let's go ahead and continue with this next process. Hit control S to save the current progress. Now do me a favor right and press click on this layer and press P on the keyboard to bring position. When you press P it should already automatically you should see position itself. Set a keyframe on position and do me a favor and move about one, two, three, four, five, six frames to the right. And then position and reposition our subject all the way up here. All right. Come over here until you see this specific side where you see the motion blur. Under this column, go ahead and enable motion blur. If you don't see it, go ahead and click on toggle switches and mode to actually see the motion blur. Now, once you click on it, I mean, it should open up on this side. That way you can be able to see this and make sure the motion blur layer is selected. Now, you can go ahead and trim this up a bit and then go ahead and zoom back in. And then if you go ahead and press play, this is exactly how it will look like. So it looks like a slow jump. And that's not exactly what you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back into this specific area and we're going to right click it. We're going to go to time time stretch and we're going to go ahead and rename this i mean change the stretch factor from 100 to 30 and press ok now move this offset this layer all the way over here so it should look something like this now here's what we're going to do we're going to make sure under the frozen frame under position we're going to go ahead and move this keyframe about two frames to the left and then offset this again i mean trim this up again so press play Okay, this is now starting to look good. Feel free to go ahead and manipulate um, how fast you want your subject to jump. If you want your subject to jump even faster, you can go ahead and uh, move this position to the left or to the right to make it to make it move slower. So for me, I'm just going to have him move a bit slower. I mean faster. Awesome. Hit Control S to save. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to offset this background just a bit somewhere around here. And uh, let's go ahead and increase this a bit. And then go ahead and for the background, what you can even do is come all the way over here and um, at the very end. And then go ahead and press N on your keyboard. The letter N on your keyboard. And go ahead and come over here in this space. Right click it. Go to Trim Comp to Work Area. Now do that. Awesome. Now here's what's going to happen next. Go ahead and press play so far just to see how it looks like. Now all you can do is just add sound effects and you're done. Because you see it's it's not that hard to create this. We just did this in like 13 minutes. It's, it's really not that hard. Now let's do this. Come all the way over here into the sound effects tab. And then under the sound effects in the project panel. Grab the sound effects and reposition it somewhere down here. Double click L on your keyboard to bring up the sound wave properties and go ahead and offset this a bit to the left now if you press play it should sound something like this 
Can offset this a bit. Nice. Of course, this sound effect, this sound effects that you guys are hearing, I customized it. That way you guys can be able to, you know, hear this properly. But yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It's just a customized sound effects for uh, you. So you get a little bit of some rushing wind in the beginning of the sound. And then you get some rocks cracking, uh, you know, concrete rock cracking sound effects at the end. So if you press play. Nice. Hit control S to save. Now let's go ahead and let's start adding some VFX assets to, you know, make this look 10 times cooler. Now, before we even add all the visual effects assets, let's go ahead and come all the way over here into the, vi uh, let's come over here down here in this area, right click this space, go to new and go ahead and click on adjustment layer. Now in this adjustment layer, what you can even do is you can go ahead and uh, reposition or move this adjustment layer to the top. Press enter on the keyboard and rename this to just distortion. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to create, manually create distortion in After Effects. So once you've renamed it into um, distortion, go ahead and crop this out a bit and uh, trim the end out a bit as well too. And what I want you to do is I want you to move this distortion layer somewhere over here. And what I want you to do is come all the way over here into your effects and presets tab. If you don't see the effects and presets tab, just come all the way up here to window. And when you scroll all the way down, you should see effects and presets tab or hit control five or command five to bring it up come over here to the effects and presets tab and do me a favor and search up turbulent displace click on that and drag that into the distortion layer now automatically you should see this sort of like wobbly you know wiggly type of uh displacement but we're going to go ahead and change that do me a favor and come to the amount and change the amount to like 15 and then come all the way over here to the very beginning, set a keyframe on evolution and do me a favor and offset this to like negative four. Move all the way, move this time indicator to the very end of this specific distortion layer and maybe offset this to like uh, four. So now if you move this time indicator a few frames forward and back, you should see that we have a bit of some displacement going on or some displacement taking place as the time indicator is moving forward. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. Hit control S to save your current progress so far. Now here's what we're gonna do. Go ahead and grab the pen tool and do me a favor and start to draw a mask, sort of like a small little box mask around our subject's feet. Go ahead and click on the selection tool one more time. Press M on the keyboard to bring up the mask path options under the distortion layer. Set a keyframe on the mask path itself. Move about two about two or three four four frames to the right click in this open area inside the inside the mask itself and stretch this out all the way to the top so just just move this all the way up here and then move this time indicator a few frames forward and what you can even do is come back down here click in this area click on the mask one more time and then move the mask all the way up here so it should look something like this it should be like this perfect do me a favor press f on the keyboard and feather this out just a tad and then close it up now if you press play you have a little bit of some distortion and again what you can even do is we can customize the distortion a bit to get a different look so click on the distortion one more time and you can even increase the size or you can decrease the size you can increase the distortion amount and you can maybe decrease the size a bit something like this to like 42 and if you press play you see that uh-huh what you can even do is press f feather this out a bit more press play one more time and what you can even do is go ahead and stretch this out a bit press u on the keyboard to bring up the other keyframes Select these two keyframes at the end and then move this all the way somewhere over here. Press play again. So that it takes longer for the distortion to leave the frame. There we go. So that's one way to do it. And hit control S to save your current progress. Now let's go ahead and add some uh, shock waves 
at the base of our subject's feet. So what I want you to do is go ahead and click on the background itself, hit Control D to duplicate the background, right click the background and go ahead and click on time and freeze frame. Now you can go ahead and rename this background to car, cars. Turn off the sound off of it and change the color to something like blue. Reposition this somewhere up here on top of the layers and crop this out a bit. Crop this part out a bit again. And what I want you to do is under the cars layer, go ahead and click on the pen tool, zoom in into our cars, our vehicles, hold space to offset this and begin to draw a sort of like a mask around our tire. All right, because what's going to happen is we want the shock waves to come underneath this. And so in order for us to be able to make that happen, we have to draw sort of like a mask around the cars that are closer to the camera and then close that hold space move all the way to this side and repeat the same process over here draw a mask somewhere around here again it doesn't have to be entirely perfect but it needs to be good enough if that makes sense there we go just draw a rough mask around here and then just come all the way up here and then just close it up and then you should go ahead and press fit to 100. So it should look something like this. Awesome. What you can even do is press F on the keyboard and feather both of the masks to like seven or eight. Close it up and go ahead and place a lock on it. Awesome. You're gonna see in a few seconds what we just did. Hit control S to save. Come back into your project panel. Like I said, I've provided some free visual effects assets and the free visual effects assets that I provided was this shockwave uh, green green screen shockwave that I got from YouTube many many years ago go ahead and drag this shockwave into our layer now I'm going to show you guys how to customize it go ahead and offset the shockwave a few frames to the right to the part where you know the shockwave completely leaves you know our scene head control shift D to split the layer and delete it offset it back again right click it go to time time stretch change the stretch factor to 30 and then offset this again now you can even change the color of this to cyan and turn off the sound off of it come into the effects and presets tab and search up key light go ahead and grab key light place it on top of your shockwave do me a favor and click on the screen color and go ahead and select the green to remove the green background close key light Come back into the effects and presets tab and search up hue slash saturation. Drag that into our shockwave. Click on colorize and go ahead and decrease the saturation and increase the lightness. And then hit control S to save. Awesome. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to come all the way over here into our, uh, what's it called? Eclipse tool. Make sure shockwave layer is selected. Hold shift on your keyboard and then go ahead and double click the Eclipse tool itself to create a perfect circle around our shockwave. Do me a favor and uh, go ahead and press M on the keyboard. I mean, open this mask settings, decrease the expansion to like 35, negative 35, and feather this out a bit to like 55. What you're gonna do is go ahead and place a lock on the mask itself so that you don't tamper with it. Close that area up over here in this section go ahead and click on this specific box to add to make this a 3d layer we want our shockwave to become a three di three dimensional layer if you don't see this three dimensional box go ahead and click on toggle switches and mode and then you should be able to see it do me a favor right and then open this up a bit go to transform and under transform go ahead and change the orientation change this orientation right here in the very beginning to something like this all right change the orientation somewhere around like 286 and then reposition this right here now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the quality back to quarter because my computer is slowing down a bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and reposition this shockwave right underneath my frozen frame so that the shockwave appears to be behind our subject because that's exactly what we're trying to do let me change the quality back to let me do half it's better now let's continue to adjust the orientation to something like this 
And what we want to do is we want to press S on the keyboard and we want to increase the scale a bit. So offset this a bit somewhere around here and reposition, like offset this whole thing right here. And then if you press play, you can see the shock wave is right there. Now what you can even do to make this look even cooler is you can decrease the, uh, the scale itself, set a keyframe on the shockwave, come all the way over here, and then go ahead and increase this 10 times, something like this. Now if you press play, go ahead and click on the set, unlock the cars uh, layer, and go ahead and uh, crop this up, I mean, trim this up a bit, like, you know, just retrim it if that makes sense. Press play. You can see that our shockwave appears to be behind our thing. You see what we just did? What you can even do is, let's say if the shockwave, you don't want the shockwave to actually slow down. You can right click the shockwave, right click it, go to time, time stretch and change it from 30 to 50. And press enter. If you press play, that's going to have a, a much slower shockwave. Again, trim this up a bit. There we go. Now, remember, this is bootleg edits, all right? This is not professional, professional edits. I'm just showing you guys how to do this simple edit with free visual effects assets, all right? Check this out again. Awesome, 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 awesome. This is exciting. I love it. Hit Control S to save your current progress. Now, feel free to um, add motion blur or fast blur to the shockwave. Let's, let's say if it's too, if, if, if it looks too hard, what you can even do is come over here to the effects and presets tab, search up fast box blur and drag that on top of your shockwave. Now, and what you can even do is come over here to this settings, close up these other effects and maybe increase the blur amount a bit to like 16. If you press play, that's more like it. And what you can even do is press S on the keyboard to bring up the scale and stretch this out a bit. And then if you press play, there we go. Feel free to play around with a scale keyframe. There we go. To get the best settings. And that's exactly what you want. Hit Control S to save. Now, let's, let's, let's go ahead and jump into the other stuff. Come all the way over here into your project panel and grab the free dust asset that I provided. This is the free side dust asset. Grab the free dust side asset and drag that on top of your layer. Now, this is going to be on top of your cars. What I want you to do is under the free dust asset, right? Go ahead and click on solo and then do me a favor and turn off the sound. So click on this little solo button right here and it should basically hide everything else except for this specific layer. Do me a favor and click on the anchor point tool and move this anchor point tool right here at the base of our dust. Click on the selection tool and then unsolo it. Do me a favor and reposition this dust right here at the base of our subject's feet. Press R on the keyboard and rotate this to match the direction of your subject as he's flying up. Press S on the keyboard to increase the scale of the dust. Press play. So you see what we just did? Excellent. Feel free to um, adjust the rotation by holding Shift R. Adjust the rotation. Adjust the scale. There we go. Hit Control S to save. Now you see how it's coming along. Again, I told you this stuff is really easy. It's 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 not that hard to make as long as you once you get. The idea of how this stuff works you can do so much let's press play again nice 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 this is looking good now let's come all the way over here and grab our um, dust exploding debris 4k this specific dust asset now I mean this this specific debris asset I actually got this again from that website if um, I should link it over here. I forgot the name of the website, but grab that debris and move that into your layer. 
Now, of course, the debris itself is colored and it has shadow, so you can always manipulate this to get the best look that you're looking for. So what I would do is I would um, I would go ahead and click on the debris itself and come all the way to, over here to the Eclipse tool and double click this space, uh, double click this Eclipse tool itself to create sort of like an Eclipse mask around it. Let's offset this a bit, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna feather this out a bit. So press F on the keyboard, click on the debris itself, press F. Um, on the keyboard and then do me a favor and feather this out a bit perfect go ahead and click on this drop down menu and then reduce the mask expansion a bit and then what you can even do is you can change this debris color to something like orange and then what you can even do is click on the anchor point tool and move this anchor point tool at the base of our debris itself and what you can even do is offset this somewhere around here. So we want the debris to be in behind the dust. And at the same time, we want it to start somewhere around here. So this is what we want to do. We want it to start somewhere around here. And then if you press play, it should be something like this. Right? So what you can even do is we want the colors of the debris to match the floor. So what I would do is I would come over here into the effects and presets tab and search up tint. I would grab tint, drag that into the exploding debris, click on the map, map black, and we're going to select a darker area of this ground. So something that's really, really dark, like this area itself is really dark. And we're going to select the brighter area of this ground something like over here if you want the colors to match here's the colors i'm going to click over here this is the color you can go ahead and copy this number into your you know the color area and uh this is also the color as well too just type in this number so that that way you can get the same number as mine so it should look something like this now here's what we're going to do we're going to um obviously rotate this a bit so press r on the keyboard and rotate this you know a tad and uh, press S on the keyboard and maybe increase the scale even more. There we go. Nice. That's more like it. And hit Control S to save. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is looking really good. Um, now let's do let's let's add some more stuff to you know make this look even cooler. Come all the way over here. I've also provided some. Uh, dust wave so you can go ahead and drag the dust wave into your layer so what you can even do is click on the dust wave itself and place that on top of your layer now the dust wave itself let's say if you if you decided to solo it it's it's pretty small and you can't really see it too well um, but again it's customized so i'm going to go ahead and um, unsolo it and i'm going to place this dust wave right here press s on the keyboard and increase the scale a lot and then press play Again, the dust wave, you can even have the dust wave under the car itself. There we go. And then for the for the car, by the way, I had, I had to click this area. If you click on the uh, layer name, it's going to bring up the layer name. So I'm going to stretch this out a bit to the end. There we go. So that the dust itself stays in front. Actually, yeah, in front of the car awesome you can even do the same thing with some of the other dust assets that i've also provided i provided dust number two and dust number three these are dust wave number one and two or i mean dust wave number two and three um you can also use some of this dust asset so let's grab one of them and let's drag that on top of our layer and like we did before we're going to click on the explode debris we're going to come into the effects we're going to see that click on the tint hit Control or command c to copy it Come back into the dust wave and hit Control command v to paste the same colors over here so you can feel free to right click it go to time time stretch and change the stretch factor to something like 40 and then you can press ok um and then see if it's too dark what you can even do is let me show you a trick go ahead and turn off the tint come over here into linear type in linear color key and click on linear color key and drag that into the dust wave 
make sure the cut the key color itself click on the this colored tool and select the dark area actually hit control Z select the dark area there we go and when you select the dark area it's gonna remove all that dark area from the dust itself that way you can still retain some more information go ahead and reposition this tint below it and go ahead and click on this tint turn it back on that way the colors of the dust will match our floor and that's one way to do it uh, hit s on the keyboard and increase the this dust itself and if you press play there we go so what you can even do is you can have the dust spread and then right around here you can hit Control shift d to split this dust layer right click it go to time time stretch and change the stretch factor back to 100 there we go and press play That way it slows down. That's one way to do it. Now, of course, there are many different assets you can buy online to get the best results. Like, for example, I, I shop at Action VFX. If you buy Action VFX, you know, assets and ground cracks, you can get the best results. Now, I definitely do want to make this announcement. I do have an upcoming Superman course. It's called Flight. And in this specific course, I'm going to teach you exactly how to create amazing Superman visuals. It's definitely going to be advanced and it's not going to be a free tutorial like this. Stay tuned for this course because this course, I'm going to be teaching you guys amazing stuff. Go ahead and click the link below to check out some of my other courses. I do have a teleportation course and I also have a speed course. If you want to learn how to do these types of edits, go ahead, click the link below and go grab yourself a copy of this course and learn. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come back into the VFX assets. I've also provided this smoke puff uh you know smoke you know asset that i got from this guy who did this spider-man um you know he, he created this spider-man asset and it was really cool and i think everybody was using it um just grab the smoke puff asset and place it on top of our layer and what you can even do is come into toggle switches some mode and click on normal under normal click on screen to remove that black background and then just press r and then rotate this a bit this is just gonna add another layer of smoke on top of everything. You can increase it, the, the size and press play. You can't see it too well because there's other dust assets, but again, feel free to manipulate this as much as you can. But I'm gonna delete that smoke puff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these two dust assets and I'm gonna place, it, place them below the car itself. I'm also gonna grab the debris itself and I'm gonna place that debris also below the car as well too because we want the dust to all not come in front of the car, but behind the car. So with, with the, um, what's the right word to use? With the, with the debris itself, feel free to, and let's say if you didn't want to have this shadow, what you can even do is press M on the debris, click on the mask itself, click in this open area, and just basically move this mask a bit to somewhere around here. There we go. That way, the shadow is gone. There we go. And what you can even do is you can go ahead and um, duplicate the dust as many times. You feel me? If you want to add more dust, um, what I like to do is I'd like to duplicate it one more time. This time around, I'll place this dust on top and then I will, you know, stretch this out a bit. And this time around, this specific dust, what I would do is... I will actually remove the linear color key from it and I will remove the tint from it as well too. And all I will do is press T on the keyboard and reduce the opacity to a bit. And then what I'm gonna do with this dust asset is I'm gonna make this dust asset slowly become bigger over time. So I'm gonna set a keyframe on scale and as it's spreading, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we're just gonna move this keyframe to the, the very end and then I'm going to place this right here below the car itself and press play. And what you can even do is press T on the keyboard, set a keyframe on the opacity, move this time, I mean keyframe, a few frames forward and decrease this value to zero. Press play. That's one way to add more dust to your scene. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that, but I'm going to delete it. Um, I'm going to hit Control S to save, and uh, that's pretty much how you would do this specific edit. Let's go ahead and add some camera shake 
and uh, some color grade uh, to make this look cool. Hit Control S to save. S now go ahead and do me a favor and select all of these layers. Right click it, click on Precompose, and then under under Precompose, rename this to Finished or something like that. Finished Render or Finished Comp, and then press Enter. Now to add camera shake, I, I use the same technique. If you've seen my other videos, you should know this by now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move this time indicator a few frames forward to the part where it seems as, as if it's about two or it's about about two frames of him off the ground right around here. We're gonna hit Control Shift D and we're gonna move this time indicator a few frames forward. I'm gonna hit Control Shift D again and we're gonna come back over here to the very beginning. We're gonna click on this layer, click on toggle switch some mode, enable motion blur. Come into the effects and presets tab and search up motion tile. Click on that, drag that in here, enable mirror edges, change the output height and the width to 150. And then uh, close this up. Come over here to the effects and presets tab and search up wiggle, wiggle position. Drag that in here and do me a favor and crank the wiggle speed somewhere around here like this and right around here. And do me a favor about one or two two frames to the left or three frames actually set a keyframe on um both of these things move it all the way to the very end and then decrease the value to zero now if you press play this is how it should look like that's the easiest way to add some camera shake to your scene to make this look cool awesome hit control s to save and then of course what i want you to do is right click this space click on new click on adjustment layer and what i want you to do is go ahead and type in this um eff uh, effect called lumetri color click on that and drag that into your adjustment layer now of course in the lumetri color they have provided under creative they have provided different uh luts that you can use you know different different color grading options that you can use for your scene to make your scene look good so for example this lut looks really nice i'm probably going to change the intensity to like 75 percent and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back into the effects and presets tab and then i'm going to search up an effect called noise just to add a little bit of some film noise to my scene i'm going to change the amount to 10. now this is going to add some noise to my scene so if i zoom in and if i change the quality to full you can see this little noise right around here let's increase it a bit more you see this this is what i'm talking about this this noise that's film noise and so that's exactly what i just added to make this look more cinematic if that makes sense oops sorry about that give me one second y'all all right change this value to 20 and then let me see how it looks like and then what you can even add to make this look 10 times cooler is you can right click this space, go to new, go ahead and click on a solid, change the color of the solid to black. And then, you know, you can always rename this to uh, border and then press OK. Do me a favor, click up the Eclipse tool itself and click on this rectangle tool and then go ahead and draw a rectangle tool on our, our you know, on our footage. And then do me a favor, click on the selection tool and reposition it somewhere around here. Um, and then click on the mask itself and change this to subtract. That way you can create this nice film cinematic look. Of course, you can add some text and that's how you make your own movie. And of course, what you can do is to render this, all you have to do is right click this, click on file, click on export, add to render queue, click on super jump. Let me delete this part. And over here, make sure that the settings is set to 8.264 and um, make sure the output is also set to you can click on it to basically you know have the video saved into an area where you want it to be saved press save press render and that's basically how you do it i hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial and i hope you guys also learned something stay blessed bye bye